Hello and welcome to Creativity TV. On today's show, we are joined by the lovely Jo Austin, who will be showing you how to make this beautiful little gift box with a paper flower on. Now, this is a really tiny one and this is really sweet and uh, I'm hoping no, there's no chocolate. It's got a really <laughs> big diamond in there. I yeah. had to wedge it in the box. <laughs> okay, so what I've actually done is I've taken two of the papers from the Home for Christmas range. And you can see there that this little gift box is not particularly Christmassy. So you can make it for Christmas if you wanted to, but because the petals are so tiny and so inlaid into each other, you can't yeah. actually see the pattern of your paper. So I've taken, obviously, something very obviously Christmas. So I've gone for the bauble one there. And then I've also gone for this one here with the Christmas trees, trees. on. Trees, yeah. And what I want to do is just take my two-inch scallop circle punch. I'm just going to pop it in. And I'm just going to punch out lots of little circles. So you can have, I would say, anywhere from around about five layers on this one. Okay, so there we've got all our little scallop circles that you need. And so, as I say, you can take anywhere from sort of four layers right up to six. This one's got five on there. Right. So a nice, big, bushy little flower. So this flower looks really difficult to make. It's actually very easy. The only thing that you need to do is to be able to cut straight lines into your little circles there. And you just need to add a little hole in the centre because we're going to brad it all together, which is what's going to hold right, it. Right, okay. Okay, so I'm going to put it face down onto my desk there. I've got a little... Basically, a little carton, so you pick these up anywhere, so the local sort of um, chemist in places like that, but a little spritzer bottle with some plain water in. And what I'm going to do is just wet the back side of the paper, and then we're going to leave that to soak in just for a second. I'm going to flip it over, and we're going to do exactly the same on the front. Okay. So you can see there, that's just made it slightly more pliable. Yeah. Okay, so it's just really softening up this little bit of paper. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the circles back together, lining up those little scallop areas, just like that. Okay. And then we're just going to take a pair of scissors. If I just turn it over, you can see where we're going to cut. And we're going to cut down towards the centre. And all we need to do is just to make lots of little cuts right, all around okay. the outside edge. And these are what's going to create your petals. So now we've got that, we're just going to take them apart again. And I'm just going to mop up a little bit more of the, pay the water that's on the desk. Okay, so what we've done there, we've got really soggy, wet pieces of paper. Now this one, you have to be really careful Pop it in the palm of your hand, press it in the centre and then screw it up. <gasps> yeah. Give it a really tight scrunch up. As many creases you as you can get in there, the better. Oh my word. Okay. So doesn't that look beautiful? And then all we're going to do is just separate these back off again. Now because we have got the hole in the centre already, because it's easier to do it when it's dry, we can just take a craft knife and just basically just pile it on the top of there just into the centre. And all we're doing is we're going with one red flower yeah, and one white flower. And then one red flower and one white flower. And this is what's going to create that, that sort of mixed up shape there. Right, okay. Now if you lose the petals, which quite often you do when you've scrunched it up and you're pulling them apart, don't, lo don't worry about it too much. Okay, so we've got that there. Mm. We just need to hold it in the centre. So what kind of flower is this then? Um, we should just call it a pom-pom dahlia. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> a pom pom dahlia. It looks a little bit like an aster, actually. I've got some asters growing in my garden at the moment. So if you did this out of pinks and yellows, that would look just oh. very asterisk with those little wispy petals yeah. on there. What I'm going to do now is just take the, obviously, my piece of card for the box. Right. Now, I've already got my double sided tape on here. So obviously, what I've done is I've taken an A4 sheet of paper. Right. I've made panels. So what I've done is I've measured across. Yeah. And I've decided that six and a half centimetres, four times is going to create a really nice size box. Right, so okay. what you would do is you would divide up your A4 sheet or A3 or A5 paper to four equal sections plus a little bit extra. Right, okay. okay so you need yeah. a little bit to fasten the box together. And then whatever this measurement is here, across these sections, you need to measure it from the bottom and bring it across and score it again. Right. And then we've just snipped in and created some little V sections there. So what I'm going to do now is just take off the double-sided tape and then we can pop this box together. 
And I must admit, just for this in the little puffy flower, what I've actually done is I've taken some artiste dye based ink and that beautiful branch oh, that's out yeah. here just to say set yeah. again. And then we're just going to fasten our box together just with that little tab underneath. Bring your edges together and just give it a nice firm press. This is really one of the easiest boxes that you can make. And then the little sections that we've got folded and scored are going to create the base part of our box. So again, we're just going to take off that double-sided tape just there. Now the tab with the double-sided tape is the last one to go on. Right, okay. So we're going to go opposites first. So first and second one are the ones that are at the side. Yeah. And then your third one is the one that's opposite where the double-sided tape is. And then your double-sided tape one comes down and then you just basically give it a little bit of a wiggle just to make sure that your box is nice and square. Give it a firm little press and that's your box done there. That's so easy. Okay, so a nice tall milk carton type box. Yeah. All we need to do then is just establish where you want to put your flower. So I'm going to pop it just there. Right. Okay, so I've made a little hole with my craft knife or your pokey tool, whichever you prefer to use. Yeah. And obviously when we put the brad through the flower, I didn't do anything with the little legs of the brad, so that can then fit straight onto the front of my box. And then just open that brad up inside and fasten it on. Brilliant. And then we can just give it another little bit of a fluff. Yeah. Just to decorate it oh, all. Oh, wow. And then just to finish off the top part of the box, what I've got is this beautiful baker's twine. I love, this. I love this and the brown string. Absolutely, yeah. these are my favourite. Yeah, well, I've kept everything sort of nice and red, and yeah. because the craft card actually, in particular, especially with this little box here, this is so sweet. The craft card goes really well with this red of this yeah. home for Christmas range. Yeah, I thought, well, I'm going to use sort of a craft coloured ink, which is the dye based chocolate ink. Yeah, and that will go nice with the red, but will also go really well with the baker's twine there. Yeah, we're just going to push this box then at each side. So if I just give that a little press, you can see there how that's going to come in. And then all we're going to do is just hold it at the top, oh, take wow. your baker's twine and just wrap that around just a couple of times. So as you're just tying that, um, I would say that to get the instructions on how to make this paper flower and how to make the box as well, mm -hmm. um, you will find the step-by-steps in the Creativity Club Hub um, under Projects section. Um, and then you can have a go at making this. Now, if you have a go at making this, I would love to see what you do. So drop me an email at tv at docrafts.com. Um, and you never know, you may feature on a future episode of Creativity TV. There we go. Okay, so what I've done wow. there is I've just threaded on a little tag from, this is from the um, Love Range, the right, Me To You me Love to Range, you. the yep, little tags. Love, yep. So I just punched a little hole just in the centre there. Oh, that's that beautiful. little tag's going to go in there. But the other thing that I like to do with this baker's twine is actually unravel it. So I'm just going to untwist it. And then this is just going to sort of add to that feathery type of look. And yeah. then just pull out all those little stringy sections there. It just gives it a different slightly different look yeah but obviously if you're a jewelry maker so obviously a lot of people make jewelry as well yeah jewelry would fit in there That's so a if perfect you need a gift nice box one for, for a bracelet or earrings and necklace yeah but they're just your two different sizes Thank you so much, Jo. And like you said, this is a perfect way to box up your jewellery once you've made your necklace or your bracelet, That's isn't it? it? So or anything you need a gift box for. Plus you've got that extra little bit of creativity with the stamping as well. Yeah, brilliant. I hope you've enjoyed today's show. Happy crafting. <laughs>